Hello. Years and years and years ago, I used to do art constantly. When I would get off work, I would come home and I would paint pictures. I would do portraits of people, paint animals. And I mean, I used to do pregnancy belly casts of people and sand them down and paint them. It was like a thing, okay, it was a thing. And then the more I got into YouTube, the more I started doing YouTube as my side hobby and I just sort of slowly phased out art for no particular reason. I used to play guitar every single day and now I hardly ever do. It's not like a conscious thought either. It's just that when you do something like this, your mind's always like YouTube centered, at least for me. And so over the last few years, I just kind of quit doing art and I'm not very happy about that. I want to do more art. I love doing it. It's soothing, it's calming, it gets your mind working in a different way, and I miss it. I miss it very much. So, last night I got the wild hair when I was watching Lord of the Rings for the 87,000th time that I wanted to, instead of just sitting there watching it, do some art while I was doing it. I just love watercolor. I think it's beautiful, I think it's classy. I think there's a little more room for error and having it look intentional. But here's the thing. Last night I sat down with that thought process in mind and I was like, I'm gonna paint a picture of my tomatoes. It's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be gorgeous. Little did I know, um, watercolor has technique. Uh, I just thought you dip in water and you lightly, no, no. I was having some mixed results. <laughs> So instead of doing it that way that I did last night, I thought today I would follow a tutorial. And I watched a tutorial from a gal earlier. Her channel is Makochino. Am I saying that right? And the video is make your watercolor painting look magical with these easy watercolor techniques and ideas. And I was like, okay, I will. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to learn how to properly watercolor. And I'm gonna see if the techniques are easy to follow, if they're difficult, if I'm struggling, or if it just ends up being natural to me. Because I can tell you from my first time watercoloring last night, it is a slower process than I initially thought, and it is a little more skill involved. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so she does this painting in the video and it is a four gridded painting and in each one is a totally different type of landscape but I think all of them are so beautiful and I would love to see if I can get it down. The main reason being is that the mountain range that you see in the photo I tried to do last night by myself and it was a fail. <laughs> It was a fail, a gigantic fail. So we're gonna try to turn this into this. And let's see if we can do it. From what I understand, watercolor paper, you need it, and I have it. Let's see what pound mine is. Everyone says you need 140. 140, fantastic. So when I was at Michael's last night, I purchased this. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was getting, okay? I don't know anything about watercolor. It has your like liquid watercolor paints down here. You've got your solids right here three brushes, some watercolor pencils, and a little mixing tray. I do know that the quality of paints does matter. I should have researched this before I went. It's usually better to just buy the better stuff off the bat, because it's usually not that much more expensive than it is to buy crappy stuff, realize it's crappy, and then buy new stuff, you know what I mean? I also don't have the right brushes, okay? The one she uses is like big. So I do have this makeup brush, and this is a Morphe M501, and it looks like this, I don't know, maybe I can make it work. Maybe I'm just setting myself for failure. I don't, what's the difference between the brushes? I don't know. But the problem is, is the brushes that came in here are just too small. What am I supposed to do with that? So it looks like the way to do this is to get some masking tape and tape the edges. Even if this turns out absolutely horrible, we're still having fun, right? Okay, so I've got my computer set up right over here. And I am going to be referencing this throughout. Well, her brush is way smaller than this. I do have this brush pen. Um, we know what, we're just gonna work with what we have. So I've got two jars of water. I have a feeling this makeup brush is not gonna suffice. Cat hair on everything. We're gonna start off with the first technique to create depth in a forest scenery. Start off by applying a little bit of water to your watercolor paper and then distribute it evenly but make sure you don't use too much water. She said real glossy, not too wet but not too dry. Since I wanted to create a summer scenery in the forest, I decided to use green watercolor but you can use any color you like of course. I also mixed it with a lot of water to make the color lighter and then I applied it all around the edges of the square while keeping the center very very light. 
If you have too much paint on your brush, just rinse it off and blend out the rest of the color with a damp brush. Okay. From here, you can start building up the intensity the same way. It's just important to start with a very light layer and then add more and more color on top. Otherwise, it will be more difficult to add depth later if it's too dark in the early stages. Now, if you notice that you get pools of color because you used way too much paint or water, like in my case, that the paper starts buckling, simply use a tissue paper or a dry brush to soak it up. The paper is buckling. Uh, yeah. I need some tissue. Oh, God. Here it's important to work rather quickly and to make sure that you don't use too much water or otherwise the wet paint will run into the dry areas and create these backgrounds that look like cauliflower. Cauliflowers? Okay. But if that still happens, don't worry, just blend it completely into the green color so you kind of wake up the paint again. Brush is not good. Oh, that's the cauliflower she's talking about. Oh God. Oh man. It's so much harder than it looks. <laughs> okay, this is literally so hard. Is that fine? Okay, mine is like all bubbled up. I don't know if that's normal. I highly doubt it. <laughs> Load up your brush with a blue color of your choice and then distribute the paint all around the paper. So once you create the blue frame, blend out the color into the center with a clean wet brush to make the color lighter and lighter towards the center. Do you just you wet the paper first? Distribute the paint all around the paper. So once you create the blue frame, blend out the color into the center with a clean wet brush to make the color lighter and lighter towards the center. Now the difference here to the first painting is that the scenery is underwater. So instead of using another color in the center, you want to load up your brush with blue paint again and then you want to start building up the color starting from the edges. Okay, what? Wait, what? Guys, I'm trying not to overthink it. Why does mine like blub up like that? It's the brush. It's gotta be the brush. Or maybe it's my paints. Maybe I have shitty paints. The amount of cat hair in this painting is staggering. I don't know if there's nearly that much cat hair in the ocean. With the rest of the paint on your brush, create a few lines that kind of create a spiral towards the center. You want to keep the outer edges dark and the more and more you move to the center, the lighter the color should become. Now for the third painting. Oh, third painting. God, this bitch is fast. I guess this is a YouTube video and it is edited. Does that look just terrible? That doesn't look like hers. like watercolor to me. 
This is something, all right, that's something. We're going to create a very simple mountain scenery using the layering technique. A very simple mountain scenery, huh? And pick up the paint with your brush and then start outlining the shape of the mountains right underneath the edge of your paper. Once you create the outline, you want to blend out this line without using any additional paint towards the bottom of the paper and then let it dry. There is literally no additional paint on this, but I feel like there's so much paint on this. That does not look like hers. That, that does not look like hers. In the fourth painting, we're going to combine both techniques. We are going to create the sunset in the background. Okay, what color? Yellow? And later mountains, trees, and anything that we want. Now here I used yellow and red to create this orangey sunset, but you can use any color you like. And blend out the rest of the paint starting from the center towards the bottom. Now the most important part in all those techniques is patience. So make sure the paper is completely dry when you add another layer. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for this to fully dry. So I'm gonna go get my hair dryer and then we shall move on to the next step. Now to create depth in the first painting, load up your brush with the same color you use for the background. In this case, I used my lime green type of color, but make it slightly darker, just a little bit. And then paint a tree silhouette on top. Just a quick tree silhouette, you know, as you do. I don't know if that even looks remotely similar, but okay. In the ocean scenery, we are going to do the same, but we're going to create a light reflections instead. So here I use the same color again, just slightly darker. And then I started painting triangles with the wider part at the edges that become smaller and lighter towards the center. All right, let's move on. To oh God, no, we can't move on yet. No, no, no. I add the same blue color just a little bit darker to the edges and blended it to the rest. Okay, not looking great, but you know, maybe it'll all come together at the end. Right? <laughs> Let's hope so. Now here you also want to use a darker version of the previous color and then repeat the steps. This is much harder. <laughs> Then she makes it look she's such a pro! Do the same in the fourth painting and let everything completely dry. Oh, okay, so I'm making an orange mountain range in that one. That one doesn't look so bad. Okay, so let's do another hair dryer moment. So basically, the more rows you add to your painting, the darker and darker the color becomes when you move closer and closer to the viewer. All right, even more. Load up your brush with the same color again, just use more paint than water to make it look darker and then apply another layer on top.
since this technique is all about layering, it's not only important to make sure the paint underneath is completely dry, but also that your watercolors are transparent because if it's opaque or it's a ton of fillers, then it looks rather chalky. Okay, she is just drawn as she talks. Okay, so it looks like she went into this next step without telling me what she was doing, really hurtful. But it looks like she made like a dark version of that, like almost black. Okay, is that that one finished? I kind of think it is. I don't know if it looks good because I haven't taken the tape off yet. Maybe that will like really show me if it looks good or not. You know what? I, I, think, I think it looks totally like shit, but you know what? I'm learning a lot of skills through this. So even if it doesn't look good, because it's like, doesn't look like trees. Like I, I really should have been paying attention to make it look like trees. I was just kind of following her lead. I think if I really practice this and hone in on it, I can make it look really good. So let's move on to the fish. For the ocean scenery, you can add people swimming around the light spot or add dolphins, fish, or anything else you like. To emphasize how deep the water is, I made some fish very tiny around the center and then added some bigger fish and dolphins around the edges that swim towards the light. Oh man, I'm not good at fish. In the third painting, I just kept adding more rows of mountains, making them darker and darker. Okay, what is this final one? She speeds through this one. She speeds through. And for the fourth painting, I just combined everything and played around with different colors. I added blues, reds, and greens. Oh God. Just experiment. Okay, so she did another mountain range. She really just went in. Okay, so you did a... I was just so fascinated by building up the layers and how colors looked underneath another color. You don't have to create a super detailed or advanced type of painting.
Um, I think I'm done. <laughs> Can you guys believe it? Let me peel the tape off and let's see if it compares. Okay. You can't tell me that's not one of the most satisfying things you've ever seen. Oh my God. Oh, we had a little spillage moment. I, I'm really in love with pulling this tape off. It's like one of the best things I've ever done. <laughs> All right, that is not too bad, you guys. Tell me what you think. I'm gonna give myself my own little critiques here. So I think what I definitely need to work on is I'm gonna definitely get a brush and not use a makeup brush because I can definitely tell that that just does not blend these colors very well. You can see a very clear lines, you know what I mean? Like where it's supposed to be super blended. Like I feel like that looks really blended and like this looks really blended, but for some reason I was struggling with this blue. I probably should have added either more water or I don't know, but I don't love the way that this one looks. It looks fine, but it's not ideal for me. I like this one, but I don't think these look like trees as much. I mean, like it gives the impression of trees 100%, but I don't think that I did a very good job of making them look like trees. So that's something I could definitely work on. I should, you know, probably refine that a little bit. And obviously we had a little bit of bleeding down here, but whatever this one i think i should have started these mountains up a little bit higher so that i could have done more but i do like the way that it looks i think that it looks pretty good and then this one i actually really really like i think it looks pretty um i like the colors of it very much and i like all these colors together i feel like it's so satisfying to look at and so what do i think about the tutorial i think the tutorial was actually really good i wouldn't so much call it like a full tutorial as just very helpful tips on how to get these similar looks, but actually ended up being a really great, easy to follow tutorial. I feel like it went really fast for me, but you can keep pausing and rewinding, which is totally fine. Because it is a lot of just like abstract shapes, you can kind of recreate them easily, even if you're not that artistically inclined. So I think that these are like perfect if you are a little bit new to it. I, I thought this was pretty easy to follow and I really like it. I think my favorite of all of them is this one, just because this is like my dream life and uh, I really really like it. I think this is really really fun and I really enjoyed doing this let me know if you guys liked watching this or if you guys would like me to do more of these on my channel I think I'd really love to it was really fun for me and I just think that I don't know it turned out kind of cool like it was it was really fun and therapeutic I got through about half of a Lord of the Rings movie in my ears I had headphones in listening to Lord of the Rings because I have a problem and I don't know I thought it was fun and it was like kind of relaxing and now I feel like I I have a little bit more of the skills to do my own art. So what were the things that I did incorrectly the first time without knowing the techniques? First of all, I did not wet the paper first. I feel like for this one, and maybe I'm wrong, but this one, she didn't say to wet the paper first, and I feel like the colors blended way better together when I wet the paper first. I don't know, I just really feel like that would have helped this one massively. You can't drink that, honey, it's paint water. You have a fresh bowl of water right over there you have to dry it in between each layer. So that was another thing that I was doing wrong. I wasn't drying my work in between. And so when you don't dry it and you try to add another layer, it just starts to muddy up and look like all one. You can't see the, the separation. The way you can see the separation on these is because I was drying it with a hairdryer in between. That is the key to watercolor, I think. I mean, granted, this is like my second time ever using it, but I think that that truly is a key to making it so much easier to work with. Like anytime you want to add another layer, dry it. For our first attempt, this isn't so bad. Maybe I'll keep practicing and then re-attempt this without the tutorial or something in the future. I don't know. This was really fun, but now I wanna like go off and venture on my own. The tape is really amazing and I think that's a great, great tip because so many, so, so, so many people have mentioned to tape the borders 
and I can see why because otherwise it just doesn't look clean like this and this looks amazingly clean. I love it so much. So Wow, that's precious. I'm gonna frame that. <laughs> Oh, you are, huh? Yeah, I love it. You do? I sure do. Which one's dolphins? your favorite? I think I like the dolphins. The dolphins? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? Yeah. I like the dolphins and I like this one. I like that one too. I think these two have the best depth. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I don't like this one because I didn't do a very good job blending the water. It's very hard. See, I like it. Well, thanks. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I think we have a frame for it. You're really gonna frame that? Why well, wouldn't I? So it's practice. Well, I'm proud of your practice. I love you so much. Oh, yeah. You're so cute. I hope you guys liked this video and that it was good to watch. If you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Love you so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you at my next video. Bye. So last night, huh? What you I'm talking to my camera. <laughs> Why are you hard to rip out? Are you fucking kidding me? Rip. Go God in heaven, hell I'd be. I bless the rains down in Africa. Own art, like, can you see my butt? What were the missteps that I made, Belly Honey? Okay, my cat wants to be over here, so she's just gonna. Be. Oh god. Oh. Okay. Sorry. I didn't realize you're so funny. I heard you say, "Mom." My legs are asleep. Are they? Hundred percent. Like, like you're I, just walking on. When I tingle? stood up, I thought my ankles were gonna break. <laughs> Yes, I'm walking on tingles. I'm it's walking terrible. on tingles. Whoa. And don't it feel terrible? <laughs>